Hey, Ed, I appreciate you. you didn't have to go with me first, but uh, Bruce, how are you doing today? Um, uh, just, just wondering, uh, you know, your overall thoughts on Arkansas, uh, and then, you know, Eric Musselman said he really, you know, they have the ability to go on runs. He calls it spurtability. Just wondering what you've seen from that and, and looking at tape of them and stuff. I think that's exactly the the games I've watched. Uh, and and if, if you're, obviously, if you're covering them, you're following them and, you know, even from their exhibitions where the other teams are, are playing well and have some control of the game. And then all of a sudden that five minute spurt where they get the team sped up and, you know, get, get on one of those runs, 10 0 runs. I just watched late. We were just talking about it as a staff. I watched the Mercer game and, you know, boom, 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 five bad possessions, five scores for Arkansas and the game's totally changed. Um, you know, it, 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 and they have, you know, they have versatility, they have athleticism, they got a lot of people that can score, they, you know, defensively, they'll throw a lot of different things at you to kind of create, uh, you know, I, a little bit of chaos, I think, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's different than Press Virginia or something like that, um, uh, you know, where you're a constant press, but this is just kind of, They'll switch everything. They'll run and jump you. They'll take away side out of bounds. And it's like those, those key possessions are the things that have been big difference makers for them. Uh, you know, so they, you know, it's, it's that they got, like I said, they have talent, they have athleticism. They got a lot of different people that can make plays for them both on both ends of the court. And then JD Note, um, I guess he's number one. He has a lot to do with that spurt ability, getting steals or finishing on the other end. Just wonder what your thoughts are on him. Then, then I'm good. Thanks. Yeah, it, you know, again, very, very versatile. You you bring up the steals. He's the leader by far. Double, double the next guy. Uh, you know, he can he can score in 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 boom quick fashion. Uh, he also is you know 11 assists, three turnovers. That's pretty good for anybody. Uh, you know, he'll go and get some rebounds for them and make plays, uh, you know, and then then the little guy is, you know, obviously had the big game in the last game uh, and it shot the ball well and really gave them, you know, some great pop off the bench. When you got guy coming off the bench averaging 15 points a game, uh, you know, that can that can change games. And I think when you talk about spurt ability and whatever you want to call it, you know, that's why when you got people like that coming off the bench that can really change things. The other thing is their big kid, you know, the, their leading assist guy is their, their big guy, 17 to five. Usually if you look at big guys, assist turnovers, it's usually totally the other way, maybe three to 17, but uh, you know, he creates uh, because he, I guess not a true big man, uh, but he passes it well. They cut off of him. Uh, you know, and, and he's even a good skip passer, you know, when people start playing weak side defense, loading up, uh, he'll skip that thing for an open three for somebody. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Bob. Uh, other questions for Bruce Weber. Uh, next question to Andrew Hutchinson. Hey, Coach, I, I know it's kind of a small sample size, just two games in, but y'all have shot it really well from three, and, and Arkansas has maybe struggled to defend the perimeter. Uh, is that something you, you hope uh, you might be able to, to take advantage of this game? Yeah, I, you know, hopefully. And, I, and I've said since the beginning with our guys that I, I really believe we're a good shooting team, but you're going to have to do it in the game, and you're going to have to do it consistently. And, uh, you know, just from our, our workouts from the spring, summer, fall, all our challenges, our shooting challenges, we've shot it well. And so I hope it's a strength of ours. And now you still got to make the right passes to get those threes. And uh, I think Mercer did a great job of getting into the paint, jump stopping, and then take the, the Arkansas guys, they, they seem to be aggressive toward the ball. And that allowed the, the easy kickouts for the open threes. Uh, you got to make them. You know, so, but they had open threes, uh, you know, same thing, Northern Iowa just kept the ball moving side to side. And then sooner or later, you know, 
you know, got, got into the paint to create an open three for somebody. Uh, you know, so it just, I hope it's a factor. I know just listening, our coaches, listening to Coach Musselman's press conferences, it's something that he feels they have to make some adjustment to. And the other teams are shooting 33 threes a game. Um, and making 43%. Now they're shooting 40. So that's, I mean, anybody would be happy with 40, but when you're giving up 43, uh, it's allowed other teams to really stay in games. Uh, next question, and I'm sorry if I butcher your name, Scotty. Scotty uh, Bordelon, I guess. Thank you. Yeah, that was perfect. Uh, <laughs> your time. Um, Nigel Pax had a strong start to the season for you. It's just what, in your opinion, is does he do well when he's playing well and, and what kind of makes him unique? Well, he, he had a good, really good freshman year. We were, I think our staff was, I know he was disappointed. He didn't get much as much recognition, but it kind of goes back. If you don't have success as a team, you don't get quite the uh, acknowledgement. But uh, he, he had a great finish to our season last year. Um, you know, really stepped it up after sitting out with COVID for a stretch in the middle. Uh, you know, he's continued that uh, even with a setback of, um, you know, an injury here in the fall. Uh, but he just he just has a great feel, a great pace to the game. You know, Indiana kid grew up, you know, Indiana high school basketball, great fundamentals. Uh, can really shoot the basketball, has knows how to get open. And I think he's a little more confident, uh, you know, a couple times and we're going to get some switches uh, the other night. They just they couldn't stop us. So they just decided to switch everything. And he just took that five and a year ago probably would have, you know, froze and not done anything, played aggressive, drove it at him, backed it up, hit an open three. So uh, since turnover is really, really good. It was great last year. He's continued doing that. Uh, just does a lot of good things for us. Okay. Uh, next question to Nate Allen. Uh, yeah, Coach, just with uh, Ismail, your uh, transfer from Wake Forest, I guess against Omaha, he made a big difference. Just kind of what has what he brought to your team? Well, one, he's long. He's he is a true at least six eight, probably six nine. And if you if you watch him shoot the basketball, is a really high release, and he's a great shooter. Um, we just got to find ways to get him open shots. And I, I, if you followed our team, it's one thing I've said: we got good shooters, but we got to get him open shots. And if we we you know a key is taking for us taking care of the basketball. The other day, uh, you know, Arkansas has twenty one assists and five turnovers. You know, we're eight, we're 18 assists, 16 turnovers. And, and I don't want that to be a difference in the game, but if we get open shots and he does, um, you know, he, he, he'll make them. He, he, he's, if he has a, a lot like Nigel, um, and then even if you get somebody flying at him, he's got a, a real nice high release. Um, and, and so he can shoot the ball with great accuracy, um, uh, I think we can post him up a little bit also. Uh, you know, he has to get a little more aggressive and physical in the paint. Maybe some putbacks, things like that will help advance his game. Thank you. Next question to Scott Beatty or Beatty, excuse me. Uh, thank you. And uh, hi, Bruce. Greetings from uh, Scott Beatty here at WDWS in Champaign. So uh, greetings from everyone here that uh, remembers you well. And uh, obviously a, a possibility that you'll match up with Illinois if uh, things go the well for both teams on Monday night. Just your thoughts on uh, playing Illinois and, um, and Brad Underwood playing against his alma mater. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh appreciate the, the acknowledgement and it could be the other way too if we both have bad nights we could play each other too so hopefully that doesn't happen but um you know it, it would be obviously i you know i could lie to you and tell you it's not going to be an emotional game um uh, no brad well no you know obviously no illinois well chester fraser my old former player and assistant is there now um and you know and then but the bigger picture is that 
you know, they're a top team in the country. And, and I know they lost the other night, but you didn't have your big fella. And, um, you know, they're going to, they're going to be a, a top 20 team. I would think all year, uh, you know, I, I anticipate that at least. So it's, it's a great opportunity for our team. If we get to that point to play uh, a quality opponent, a top 20 opponent that, uh, you know, you see what we're at, where we're at as a team. And that's that's the most important thing. I'm just worried about our team. Obviously, like, you you know, it, it'll be a little different too. you're playing on a neutral court. Uh, you know, you were playing in, if Brad was coming back to Bramlage, it would be one thing. Or if we were going to Champaign, it would be another thing for us, for me at least. Um, but uh, you got a neutral court. It's, you know, just you see the tournaments on last night, Borough Beach and, um, uh, and then the Charleston tournament, uh, just, it's always that fun time Thanksgiving, you know, hoops festival and, and, and we'll be part of that and hopefully play some good opponents. And then, uh, fans of Champaign, uh, remember Mark Smith for, for one year here and just, uh, how, how you got connected to him and what drew you to bring him to Kansas state. Actually, I think we were the first one to offer him first high level team to offer him. You know, if you know his history, he was a baseball player, you know, committed to Missouri in baseball. And I think, you know, baseball guys always commit early. Um, you know, you know, I think a little bit of an injury that, you know, set back his baseball career, uh, had a great senior year. I, I remember going at Christmas time to watch him, um, you know, when we were visiting our, our kids in St. Louis. Uh, we offered him right after that. We recruited him pretty hard. When he left Illinois, he, his family called us. Um, we went there at the, to, at the semester to talk with him. We said, please, uh, you know, wait, we'll have a scholarship. But he got a little panicked and he knew Missouri and obviously Conzo, um, you know, had recruited him also. So, you know, we we're happy he had three good years there. But it, after, you know, when his other teammates left, you know, Mark, we were the first one to call. We said, hey, you know us, either you're coming or you're not. And we didn't really have to recruit him and, you know, happy to have him gives us an experienced guy. He wants to keep his game, you know, improving. And, and he's been really good for us so far, just as a great teammate as a, and he's a good player. Bruce, thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Good to see you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next question to Michael Goins. Bruce, how do you limit the turnovers? Ah, uh, you know, I, I was pretty happy at halftime. We were only at five, and, you know. Then you look at Arkansas, and they have five in a game. Um, you know, I, I just, you know, a lot of them were down the stretch, or not a lot of them, but in the second half, you probably had four or five down the stretch. So I'm hoping, I'm looking on the bright side that, uh, you know, that we we made a little of improvement on that, even though the numbers didn't show it. Um, you know, just valuing the ball, not trying to make a play every time you touch it. Um, and it's it's going to be key when you play better opponents. There's no doubt. And again, I said earlier, and I've said it all along, we need to get shots off. And I think if we get we get we got a pretty good percentage, 50 the other day and almost 40 from three. Um, you know, you, you take half those turnovers off and get shots. Now you're adding, you know, at least eight to 10 more points uh, just by average. So it, it could be a, you know, a nice boost for us. So um, we've talked about it in practice. We've made some, I think we really have made some improvement in practice and that's, that's where it all starts, but now it's got to continue into the games. Where are you with defensive concepts this early in the season? I, you know, at times we're really good. Um, uh, you know, I, again, they scored 13 out of the last 15 points the other night. So the score shouldn't, they shouldn't have had that many points. And that's a little disappointing. Um, wish our guys would have kept their focus on, on, you know, on the mission and finish the game. But, uh, you know, we, we do some things. Well, I, I was worried about post defense after Pitt state. I think, you know, that big guy kind of took it to us, but we've done a better job the last two games with that. Uh, ball screen defense is always tough. It's tough for everybody. And, uh, you know, the, you know, we, we we're good at it at times. We got to get over ball screens. Uh, we can't let people get downhill and get in the paint because it, it creates havoc for everybody. 
Um, and then we, uh, the other night, they made, they did make some threes, um, you know, and I know some of them were down the stretch, uh, but, uh, you know, we, I think it's one thing we've always done pretty good about getting our hands up and contesting those threes. Hopefully we'll continue to make some progress with that. And last one, where was Davion Bradford before condition wise, before his pneumonia and how long is it going to take to be back? 100%? Uh, I, you know, Wyatt and uh, Matt asked after the game and I, I, I would say, and I actually, I sat with him yesterday, coach Lowry, myself, our strength coach, just kind of, you know, talking to him about how we can take some steps. Um, you know, he needs practice. Practice helped him last week. We had four days in a row. And now you're not going to have quite the, you know, number of days of practice. You got more games coming up. Uh, you know, so I, I would say I'm hoping by mid, mid December, we'll have him where we get him back to where he's, you know, closer to where he should be. And, uh, you know, really feel 100% by, by Christmas time. And that's obviously if there's no other setbacks. Thank you, Bruce. Yep. Uh, next question to Grant Flanders. Hey, Coach, uh, you out-rebounded uh, Omaha by 12. Um, I'm wondering if that gives you confidence in that department. You know, it, it's something, uh, and it's going to be a big key. If you look at the stats, that's it's been uh, Arkansas is plus eight on rebounds and, and averaging – uh, almost four more offensive rebounds a game. They, they spread you out. They got a lot of weapons. Uh, they, they're, you know, they'll put that three ball up, they'll put up quick shots and you got to get those long rebounds. You, you know, it's going to be key to stay in front of them, contest shots and then limit them to, to one shot. Uh, uh, you know, Mark has been a nice surprise uh, with the rebounding. Uh, if Selton, you know, a year ago, I, you know, in practice about, Christmas time, I asked him if he's ever going to get a rebound for our team. And, and he's really gotten better, um, you know, rebounding the basketball. Uh, you know, he, he might be second on the team. Uh, if you look at, I haven't looked at the total stats yet, but, um, and then, you know, Casey on Davion, Casey and Davion, uh, you know, they got to make sure they're not explosive jumpers, but they got to make sure they're boxing out to give themselves to get, you know, each of them, you get, what do we get 11 between them the other night? That's pretty good for, you know, a, a combo group. Uh, you add Logan into that group, you have another couple. So um, I hope it becomes a strength. Uh, we will definitely be emphasizing it. Uh, it's one of our keys on the, in the game uh, the next couple of days in practice as we prepare. You talk about Mark's rebounding, but, you know, he also seems to do a lot on the floor. I want to talk specifically about his playmaking. Um, it seems like guys are really good off the ball, and he's just really good at finding guys already early on. Yeah, he threw one that it almost uh, killed a fan in the stands the other day, but he did one of his fastballs at about 90 miles an hour and missed everybody, and hopefully that guy didn't get hurt when it went in the stands. But um, – you know, it's one of the things when he came here, he said, coach, I want to have a chance to make some plays. And, and we told him we will, as long as he takes care of it. Um, he's, he's had some good passes. Uh, he's, he, he's got that big body. He can get by people. If he gets his body on people, he can, you know, as long as he makes the right decisions. And, and that's what, uh, you know, uh, hopefully that makes us really versatile. I talk about Arkansas being versatile with all their guard play and, Guys that can make plays, I hope it's also one of our strengths. Um, you know, you got obviously Nigel Marquise have been pretty good assist turnovers. Um, you know, and, and you add Mark, Mike, uh, and Selton to that group. Um, you know, that's, that's a nice, versatile uh, team that can make plays for each other. And then last one I got is Selton, you know, his driving ability seemed next level compared to what he was able to do last season. So, I mean, just is that all the accumulation of the work he put in in the offseason? Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt. Uh, you know, older understanding it, uh, getting his, you know, being able to go both ways, uh, just, uh, you know, advancing his game, his little pull up is, is you know, is really, it, I told him he actually looks like a player now. So it just, um, you know, it's good. And, and that, you know, it's a, over the course of time, as you said, 
that's how you get better. You put time in the habits and practice become your things that are your strengths and gains. And I, I hope that continues. And we, we are, con, you know, as a staff, we just, one of the things we just talked about, we got to continue to work on improvement. It's just not an off season. You can keep getting better right now. Thanks coach. Thanks, Chris. Uh, next question to Kellis Robinette. Hey, Bruce, uh, I know in, in the past, this is probably a matchup where you guys would have liked to uh, slow the pace of the game down quite a bit when, you know, in the 60s or whatever. But with this roster, are you tempted at all to, to let them run? <laughs> I don't think we're going to uh, try to outscore them 95-93. I, I don't think that. But, you know, we got to take advantage when we got to get good shots. And I, and I hope it's some out of transition. Um, but also we got to be effective in the half court. Uh, you know, both of them, that's, that's what good teams do. And I, I think that's, that's what Arkansas, obviously they're really good in, on the break. Uh, you know, they got, as we talked about their versatility, pushing it, a lot of guys can make plays. Uh, but at the same time, they can, they got enough weapons to create and, and make plays, especially one-on-one -on -one in the half court. So, uh, you know, I, I I, hey, if we win, if it's 55, 53, I'll be happy. You know, it's not, I just want to be on the positive side. It would be a really good win for us and a nice uh, confidence builder moving forward, but it, it's, it's not going to be easy. And uh, I was just curious after you mentioned Brad Underwood earlier, is he a, is he a guy you keep in contact with like uh, Tom Izzo? Do you talk to him on the phone ever? Uh, just not, you know, not, I wouldn't say, ever, you know, we see each other, obviously, um, you know, on the road recruiting and, and know a lot of mutual people, a lot of our guys, you know, that are in K-State, the former players played, you know, played here mm -hmm. with that previous staff. So they all know him. Um, so they're, you know, we, I would say we have a good relationship, but it's not like, uh, you know, where we went back years and years ago, like I do with Tom Izzo and Kevin Stallings, guys like that, that, that you, you know, call every, every week or whatever. All right. Thanks so much, Coach. Yep. Uh, any other questions uh, for Coach? I've gotten everybody who's raised their hands. Hey, uh, I had one more. If that's oh, okay. sure. No problem, Bob. Uh, Go ahead. Hey, Bruce, I just wonder um, if you know Eric Musselman at all and just kind of what, what do you think about him? Because obviously he had the pro background for so long and now he's doing real well in college. Yeah, actually, I had him come to Illinois. Uh, and do a clinic. I think it was one of the years he was out. Uh, he might not have had a, a job that year. Uh, you know, one of our former guys at, at Purdue years ago, Brian Cardinal had his breakout with coach Musselman with the Warriors. Uh, a bunch of guys got hurt and he, you know, he put Brian in there and Brian ended up, you know, I, I still remember Brian called me. I was driving. He goes, where are you coach? I'm driving. He said, pull over. I just signed an NBA contract. So, um, you know, I, I, I know, I know of his dad. I grew up in Wisconsin. Um, you know, when he took over Minnesota, I was a young kid, young, young kid, uh, loving basketball. He had crazy George. I think it was crazy George, the ball handling guy. My brother had him. So there's, I know of him. And then obviously the Nike trips, um, in and coaches versus cancer, he, his wife and him do a great job of raising funds for coaches versus cancer, and um, you know just appreciate what he's done in the business over the years, and and he's done it at a bunch of different levels. Well, was he was he pretty good at the clinic, or what? What are your recollections of that? Oh, he did a great job at the clinic. Yes, he did. He you know he knows basketball, and uh, uh, you know just basketball is his, his life it's his dad and going back and and I do remember that he, he did a great job and there's there's things I still uh you know teaching points and and little sayings and ideas that I, I still remember from the clinic that we use anything in particular just uh I think the you know how he does it now the versatility the the, the NBA I uh, you know would use using the ball screens and things like that it was years ago when you know ball screens were just kind of be had, you know become popular in the nba but not as much in college and uh, i brought him in one year flip saunders in one year 
um, just, you know, different voices, different people, experiences. You always want those type of things. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, any we're other excited, obviously, to come to Kansas City Hall of Fame, uh, college basketball experience. Uh, you know, for us, I hope our, you know, we our, our you know, we have great fan support. We're going to need it. Obviously, tough competition. Uh, we're looking forward to it and appreciate you guys. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. Okay. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate Thank it. You. Appreciate your time. Go Thanks, Cats. everybody. Be Taylor. Bye. <laughs>